coming up on this Halloween edition of Cash on Debut at the Thatcher Young Mansion. You know you know somewhere when you know it's ghost stories. We'll show you some of Cash Valley's creepiest places and the stories that go with them. Keep your mind open. An open mind is one thing, but we will show you what else you might need to see something from the other side. Are you here to harm us? We'll show you how to protect yourself from ghosts. All that and more on this Cash Rendezvous Halloween special. Welcome to this Halloween edition of Cash Rendezvous. I'm Ting Yu Chen. And I'm Yvonne Bass. We're here at the Thatcher Young Mansion, built in 1878. The mansion was home to the ninth mayor of Logan, George W. Thatcher, who died in 1902, and his wife, Eunice Young Thatcher, who died in 1922. The two have been seen walking these very halls to this day. Now the mansion is used as a performance hall and is featured in Logan's Downtown Ghosts Tour. Speaking of ghosts, Emma Face joined us to tell us about some other local ghost stories. Thanks, Tingyu. Yeah, so Cache Valley has so many ghost stories. I'm sure that you guys have heard of the nunnery, right? Oh, yeah, the place is freaky. Yes, it definitely is. Um, so I wanted to learn more about what makes these stories so popular and if we're changing how we're telling them. Did another camper break a branch? Or are the nunnery Dobermans running towards you? Are those rustling leaves or the cackling of a Logan Canyon witch hecata? It may seem obvious in daylight, but not in the dark. Cache Valley in general is just sort of swimming in ghost stories. The valley is known for the nunnery. It's still there and it's pretty creepy. Historians at Special Collections say the myth centers around a Catholic retreat for pregnant nuns, where their babies would eventually be drowned in the swimming pool. There's also the weeping woman. It did feel a little damp underneath her eyes. Where folklore say you might feel the tears of this woman in the Logan Cemetery on a full moon. These stories aren't new. Well, so there's been ghost stories for many, many years. You know, I think back to the earliest recorded history where, where the idea of interacting with people who had died and that they go on to a different kind of experience. But stories change. We're not stuck just telling stories from hundreds of years ago. We get to keep them updated with stories of, well, I heard someone who went to this spot and this happened to them. Special Collections preserves ghost stories on paper. You preserve them by telling them. A lot of ghost stories, it's really about, it's not necessarily about the ghost, it's about you and me. We're in charge of them. We get to sort of embody them and act them out in ways. New stories start in places like this all the time. We're not just retelling the old ones. Everyday people are experiencing ghosts in a variety of contemporary contexts in their own homes, in restaurants, at parks, in playgrounds, on their computers, in digital spaces. Ghosts are still everywhere. But folklore say our ghost stories aren't just being shared in the dark with the single flashlight below us. We're relaxing in our homes, sharing them online, on our phones. Social media, that ability to have small-scale conversations with hundreds of thousands of people at a time, just proliferates and, and, and increases exponentially. It amplifies our ability to tell the stories that we find interesting. McNeil shared her own ghost experience, as did others like Brandon Fugel. Social media forms its own sort of archive. These stories won't be going anywhere. No story or legend trip or custom sticks around unless it is meaningful to us in some way. Now checking out the nunnery for yourself is a little bit tricky. It is private property, so going up there without permission is trespassing. But the good news is the Weeping Woman is really easy to find in the Logan Cemetery. And the next full moon to check out that legend is on November 19th. Thanks, Emma. Bye-bye, pumpkin. And hello to our scarecrow, Faititi Tuolita. She went to the Whittier Community Center to follow a paranormal team during one of their investigations. What was it like being on an investigation? Was it what you were expecting? 
Um, no, it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I've seen paranormal investigative shows on TV, but it's very different watching it on TV versus actually going through and using the night vision equipment and using all of like the cool technology that they have. It was a lot different. Ghost hunting actually goes back a lot further than people realize. Personally, I just think we have the energy that moves on to the next world and that sometimes that veil is thin and we're able to see through it for ghosts, but it's, that's the number one question. What is, how is it all tied together? Have you ever walked into a room and nobody's saying anything, but you immediately feel like there's just been an argument in this room. People believe that's energy. And it's the same kind of thing with ghosts. Some are able to use the energy around them to communicate. Fair warning to the women, you may get touched. If you meet 10 people on the street, nine out of 10 are gonna be really good people. It's that 10th one that's a jerk. And it's the same with people who have passed on. If you were a jerk in life, you tend to be a jerk in the afterlife. So it's that 10th one you have to look out for. You're not allowed to push me down the stairs. They're using new technology to track electronic voice phenomenons and lasers to track movement. They have radios that skip through all of the stations quickly. The belief is that ghosts are able to use that to communicate. They put electromagnetic field detectors in children's toys to attract younger spirits. And some familiar methods. The shave and the haircut knock. Dowsing rods are used by investigators to communicate with the paranormal. You can ask a question, and if the rods cross, the answer is yes. It's a fairly low-tech way of communicating with the spirits, but they're not doing this for show. They say there's a deeper meaning behind why they do what they do. I've been able to have a few different family member spirits that's passed on that's kind of talked to me and kind of helped bring closer to their loved ones. So it's kind of cool when that happens. You can kind of get a little bit more understanding of the people that kind of went here all the way before us and um, kind of what happened here to them. Why it's so important because they have a voice but a lot of people can't hear them so we're being that extra voice for them to let them know that they're not forgotten that they're not just left in history. And if you're a skeptic. I try and just tell people to to come you know <laughs> let's probably the best way to see what goes on here. That's okay if you don't believe, but have an open mind. Come to an investigation and actually experience what can happen. Dowsing rods, you can see these. It's just never gonna be enough for somebody until they have their own experience. Keep your mind open and you never know when you're gonna have an experience. That was pretty spooky for you, TT. Were you, were you scared? Um, I was a little bit nervous going down into the basement. They said that there's a vortex down there, and a vortex, they said, is kind of like a chaotic spiraling portal, so sometimes it's hard for the spirits to pass through it, and sometimes they can't get back into the spirit world, so I was a little bit nervous about that. I would be too. Um, thanks for joining us. Now it's time for our Cash Round Debris Halloween tips, trick and treat. First up, a tip. If you're a costume co for a skill, but you're a non-makeup artist, this is the tip for you. <laughs> you are near a fishnet pies. Then you are near an eyeshadow palette with the color of your choice. And lastly, a makeup brush. Generously, dip the makeup brush in the eyeshadow. Take the fishnet pies hold down where the scale would be and brush the eyeshadow on. Do this a few more times to get the shade you want. Once you have done it a few more times and are happy with the look of the scale, you are done. And coming up, I'm not most people though, we'll show you what makes a psychic tick. Zombies, well, just breaking my house. Some ghosts are very classic and have longer history, but just not the one we know. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds If you could see you through my eyes instead of your ego I believe you'd be surprised to see that you've been blind Walk a mile in my shoes Walk a mile in my shoes yeah, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk, Walk a mile, mile in my shoes Walk, Walk a mile, mile in my 
shoes Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes So, you're up back for more. You may or may not think that ghosts are real, but I went on an adventure that challenged my doubts. I do not like the energy in this room at all. Like, I feel like I got punched in the gut. This room is full of what Vivian Godwin calls negative energy. She says to protect yourself from this energy, you can start by putting salt in your shoes from getting anything attached to you. Holding an obsidian stone and using holy water. The definition of a psychic is somebody who knows things that they wouldn't normally know. And a medium is somebody who can communicate with spirit, and I do both. She says she loves what she does because it involves working with others. I'm not doing it to um, make money. I'm not doing it to get rich. I'm doing it because I help people. But then, you know, I, I am creating value. I have a skill set that not everybody can do. Her clients say that she is the real deal. They say phony psychics exploit or take advantage of people and tell them what they want to hear um, versus saying, you're not gonna like what I have to say, but you need to know this. Um, and here's, here's how I can help if you are open to receiving it. And the Payne family was open to receiving help. Vivian is descending into the basement of the Payne family home for a paranormal investigation. There is something in this house. And I, I'm really not feeling comfortable having my back to that corner. The cats stared at the corner while we listened for disembodied voices. Are you here to harm us? Do you want to be helped? Payne says whatever is in her home has oh, affected her family. It's especially affected my children. There is such a struggle in this home. This cup represents negative energy and this dropper is good energy. Now Vivian says that when you try to change the energy even just by a drop, it can get messy. And that is exactly what is happening for the Payne family. You're trying to put in so, so much good, but everything's just this overflowing. Because there's some crazy crap in here. Melissa's so. sons had trouble sleeping in this room. Uh -huh. I do not like the energy of this room. I'm yep. just going to tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. When we passed through the doorway, we could feel the temperature drop. It's at least like a 20 degree difference. Mm. Yeah, it's a This room like never gets Oh my gosh, it was way cold in here. And my camera batteries dropped with it 48% in five minutes. On three separate we devices, we heard what we thought was the word go. Is there something you want? That was a whisper. Yeah. It, it, like, or like it said, go. Is there something you want? I did not have a good feeling. You leave and you feel lighter and you come back and you just felt ugh. Payne says the feelings tonight weren't all bad, Thanks to Vivian's tips. It helps me to feel more confident that um, I can protect my own personal energy and to keep the vibration of the home high and kind of almost like, okay, it's not just me. Vivian plans on returning to the pain home in hopes to clear the negative energy and entity she felt that night. We already know the traditional American ghost story. But what are the ghosts are like in the other country? I learned so much about the other ghosts in Asia. We might be already familiar with the classic character, such as vampire or zombies. But what about the Asian ghosts? Most of the ghosts are nice, but some of them will just kill you. The first two characters are the classic character, the Chinese vampire, and the little girl in red. When I was a kid, I was so scared because there's a lot of like scary movies, horror movies, so, and some like show on the TV. So I was watching them every day, and then uh, every night when I was sleeping, I was thinking about those scary movies. So it was like I I couldn't fall asleep. I was so scared that like uh, zombies well just breaking my house and <laughs> suck my blood. My family will tell me the story about that. Sometimes if you're hiking alone, there will be a girl wearing a red jacket and following by you, but 
I would just like every time we go hiking, I would definitely just following my parent and never get lost. Split Mouse Lady. Split Mouse Lady is one of the classic ghost story in Japan. She will usually wear a white max and uh, with the long hair and just wandering and just can approach person who are just walking along and ask, "Am I pretty?" and slowly take off her max. If you answer yes, then she will turn your mouth just like her. If you say no, she will use her scissor and kill you right away. I think I definitely scared. The virgin ghost is the young female ghost who died with H8 before getting married. She will be wearing the white handbook and because she wasn't able to get married before she was alive, she was just wandering around the world and seducing men. I didn't really grow up with that story, but it's really scary about to heard of any ghost story. Even they are not for girls, they do surprise people than what I heard of. After introducing so many ghosts from Asia, on this year, you might have a few different options on the Halloween costume. If you're looking to give out more tricks than treats this year, we have a scared, frightened every trick-or-treater in our Cash Rendezvous Tips, Tricks and Treats. <laughs> First, find a bucket large enough to hold an electric leaf blower. Plug in your leaf blower and set its blow setting to medium. Put the leaf blower in the bucket and tape a trash bag to the windpipe. Pull an extension cord around and into the house so visitors don't see, and with a power switch, be ready to step on it. Then, as people come to the door, Turn the power on and enjoy the show. And coming up... We've had people freak out. This hospital is very different than the usual. In a normal hospital, they cure you, but here they nearly kill you. We will show you why those people choose to stand inches away from the chinso. There is a road laid out for me. Boxes everywhere, and this is going to be Addie's room. I am blind, but I really don't like it. I hope so. Yeah. I know this road is there for me. There is a love First night here, but Amy seems cool. <laughs> down by the river. <laughs> I am blind, but I need. I got this. I know I'm okay. If I'm really mm. take me down to the river and wash me. Oh. I heard you went to your holiday hospital, right, Eva? I did. Halloween is known as the most frightening holiday of the year. I went to a place where many go to feel that festive fear. Horror dolls, haunted hallways, and Halloween costumes. But this haunted hospital is a lot more than that. 
This doll is not the creepiest thing I've seen tonight. As you can see by my wristband, I went through the asylum and I barely made it through. No, you didn't. The spooks did their job by going scary deep in their characters. We collect animal skin pelts. I just happen to have some lovely bones tonight. All the spirit is here and the heart of this haunted hospital is pumping with it. You need to get scared to um, have a life. I was very, very nervous, especially with everything that was happening to me in there, but overall, I definitely did like it. People dressed in costumes aren't the only thing that might scare you. So we've actually had people up here that were, uh, I don't like using the word possessed, but you know, stuff attacks, attacks them just like human beings will attack human beings, you know. A, bad entity will attack people and give it negative energy. We've had people freak out. I would like to say that I have a healthy skepticism. Like, yes, I believe in ghosts and stuff like that, but I need proof. It looks super scary. Oh, it was. Will you go again? I think I would. And maybe if I was brave enough, I'd get full contact this time. To read out our cash on David Tulip's trick and treats, we wanted you to find out the best and the worst candy to hand out this Halloween. So we went straight to the source, the playground. Here's where we find out. <laughs> What is your favorite Halloween candy? Um, Airheads. Lollipops. Reese's Pieces. Jolly Ranchers. Sour Pots Kids. Skittles. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's. Tootsie Rolls. Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Milky Way. Skittles. Skittles. Reese's Pieces. M&M's. Multicolored licorice. Skittles. Candy Corn. Skittles. Three Musketeers. Reese's Pieces. What is the yuckiest Halloween candy? Probably sour skittles, pretzels, Reese's peanut butter cup, candy corn, Jolly Ranchers, Reese's mm. Pieces, Paul Moore, Snickers, Jawbreakers, mm. Skittles, Skittles, mm. Jawbreakers, mm. Skittles, Water, Water. Sarah Murphy joins us to talk about why people like to be scared. We've learned a lot about the different scares here in Cache Valley and the methods people use to find them. But why do people seek them? That's right, guys. Now, for myself, I always thought I was a person that liked scary things and being scared. But as you're about to find out, that is apparently not the case anymore. I went to a haunted house and I walked through it myself to find out why people like being scared and why they pay money for the thrill. Oh, no. Please. Being chased down a hallway, meeting zombie brides. Your kind's not welcome here. And getting knocked to the ground <laughs> with fear. That's what happens when the ghouls and goblins come out to play for Halloween. I just got scared out of my mind. We got scared, actually. <laughs> The 10th West Scare House opens each October. Hi guys! Hi! And workers and scares come together to make a haunting experience. Welcome to the carnival! It's not anything like a normal job, but it's really fun. It's really funny to see people's reaction. Like, really funny. From the monkey man to the zombie dentist, scare lovers say they enjoy it all. Their favorite part... <laughs> Definitely the guy with the chainsaw because I hit against the wall. Chainsaw dude. Probably the guy chasing us with the chainsaw. Chainsaw guy. I love the enjoyment they get out of it. I love like uh, they, they scream and then they laugh because they're having so much fun for some reason. Walking through these fluorescent colors in these black lit hallways and putting on these 3D glasses are something these people do to enhance the scare. So why do they do it? Things get a little bland around the home. You need a good scare. It's the spooky season. Even though I get scared, I feel like it's still fun to like be like scared all of a sudden because I know it won't like, like last forever. <laughs> it's a different kind of scare. It's so scared, huh? The kind these people seek out from haunted houses. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I think the haunted house like is definitely not 
not that kind of like fear that like sticks with you and like gives you bad dreams. It's mostly just like jump scares, which is like the fun kind of scare that like gets you smiling. And staff has theories too. I think it's escapism. And stress is triggered by uh, the fight or flight response, but you can't run or fight your stress because it's, you know, a school or work or whatever. So they come to a place where they can be scared, where they have the opportunity to run from something that actually feels like danger so they can release that stress. Sometimes it's nice to just have it out of our hands and not know what's going to happen. Get off my bridge! While there may be no clowning around, fright makers and the frightened say... <laughs> The suspense, okay. jump scares, and screams can have something for everyone. It's never too late to try something new. It's a good nighttime activity to do with your friends. Hi there! <laughs> and to those who are too scared. They should grow up. <laughs> it's a lot of fun they're missing out. It sounds like the chainsaw guy was pretty scary. What did you think was the worst? So the chainsaw guy, he was pretty scary. But for me, I'd have to say the scariest part was definitely the clowns. They took their job pretty seriously and followed us minutes after we even got out of the house. But despite all the fears, I'd have to say I agree with the chainsaw guy. I believe everyone should do it at least once. Well, thanks, Sarah. Now let's wrap up the show. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Cash on Debut. You can find our previous editions on our Facebook page. We'll leave you some more shots of the Handy House. Happy Halloween, Cash Valley! America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. I'm only 17, but I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family. The first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us. Invest in us. Watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. I. I believe. I believe that. I believe that we. I believe that we will make a difference. We will treat everyone with respect. We will stop violence of every kind on campus. We will build each other up and not tear each other down. 
We will know where to get help when a friend is struggling. We will value the dignity in every person. We will stand up to protect our Aggie family.